Welcome to a Blood and Pigment Faction Review. I'm Joseph. I am Guy. And I'm Dan. Today we're talking about the English Buccaneers. It is home to some of the most famous Buccaneers from the age, like Captain Morgan and Captain Kidd. This faction is very similar to some of the other Buccaneer factions, some which we've actually already reviewed, namely the Brethren of the Coast and the French Buccaneers. To jump right into it, this faction has the same faction abilities as the French Buccaneers. And that's free grape shot and a free mulligan once in the game. Is that right? Plus two to the initiative roll. Right. Uh, this this faction doesn't get free grape shot like the French Buccaneers. So which makes the French Buccaneers better? No surprise there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the faction abilities aren't the only thing the, Engli- the English Buccaneers share with the Brethren. Personally, I'm getting huge flashbacks looking at the unit list, and I wonder why as I gaze at all the Dutch units here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Dutch and the English are pretty closely allied during the late 17th century, weren't they? When they're not killing each other, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a Dutch king on the English throne. So. When they're not arguing over what we should be a king or we shouldn't be or you shouldn't have a king or yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Or as I learned in my very old history class, you know, inbreds beefing over turf. <laughs> <laughs> Sum up all of European history there before we get too deep in it. <laughs> so the core units that the English Buccaneers gets are capers, veteran freebooters, freebooters, forlorn hope, and sea dogs. And the only unit among those that the English Buccaneers gets that as a core unit that the Brethren of the Coast does not are Forlorn Hope, which is kind of the reason that you're going to play this faction a lot of the time is because you want a command unit of Forlorn Hope or you want, to, you, you want to play Forlorn Hope. They're an amazing unit, aren't they? Yeah! Seven points, but they have a Buccaneer gun and a Brace of Pistols and a good shoot skill and free grenades, one of the only units that has free grenades on every... One of uh, one out of four units. One of two units that get free grenades with uh, this yeah, unit and Interplogue. Yeah, at one every four models. And this one gets, uh, well, I guess it's not two units. It's uh, Forlorn Hope, uh, Les Perdue's Infants, and the Interplogue. Interplogue do not get free explosives. I was pulling them up just to confirm right. it right now. They just have Brace of Pistols, the standard melee weapon. You got a, you get free cheap ex- uh, fire pots and stink pots, but not free grenados. So these guys have the cheapest grenades. Yeah, which basically means they're kind of six points each, and they have brace of pistols and musket or a buccaneer gun and four resolve, which is also one of their great selling points. I like to make these guys veterans, but then they're eight points, but they can just do so much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It is my opinion, if you're going to take these guys as like a, you know, a, a crack unit, you need to make them better and get the most out of them, for sure. They're good at range. They got ball and shot, fast reload. They got vanguard, so if you're on land, you get a free move in the start of the first turn. Like, while you know, they don't compare, in my humble opinion, to my beloved Enterplog, they are definitely a solid unit that I have played against and played with. And when playing with, they're awesome. It's also very sad when your unit of Zelai didn't get charged by Four Lone Hope because you forgot about them. I don't want to talk about it, though. I don't want to talk about it. It's like a good story there. <laughs> you know, and like I said, the reason they're playing this faction is that you want to make a Four Lone Hope your command unit. If you make the Four Lone Hope your command unit, most of the time, your opponent has to eliminate your command unit to win the game. Because they just keep rampaging. <laughs> well, with that four, well that four resolve for a strike oh, right, test, like right. that that four resolve with the strike test means that they're not giving up. If on a strike test, like most of the time, seventy percent of the time, they're going to keep fighting. Yeah, that's one of the best possible command units, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. For even eight models, like at seven points each. I think eight models or twelve models. Twelve models is a lot. I've done it once, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough pill to swallow. There, paying eighty, ninety points for one unit, plus your commander. Yeah, it'd be eighty-four points for Fernal on Hope. Ninety-six, ninety-six points for twelve models if you <laughs> make them veteran. And add up twenty-five point commander to it, and you get one hundred and fifteen points. <laughs> that is. Brace of pistols and and 
three grenades that you get to throw and the with how the rules work, like the people who have grenades in a four lone hope unit, those guys die last. Oh yeah. Yep. They might blow up their buddies, but they aren't going down. <laughs> no. <laughs> they never will blow themselves up with a, a grenade as long as there's a, a non-grenade holder next to them. You die instantly. <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive. And I find this faction overall fairly expensive. You're probably going to have less models than your opponent playing the English Buccaneers, in my experience. The Sea Dogs are cheap, obviously, just regular sailors, but then... Four Lauren Hope are seven, Freebooters are six, Veteran Freebooters are eight, and we should talk about them too, and Capers are five, and then you have a good selection of support units, but none of them are... None of them are inexpensive other than uh, Engage and Warrior Musketeers and English Militia. I guess you can fill out your ranks with... I've done it. (laughs) Throw away English Militia. Yeah. So So, I think it takes a little bit of skill to uh, leverage the good units and not take heavy, expensive casualties early in the game. So be aware of that as you pick these guys up. Yeah, yeah. You'll be tempted to, uh, with Forlorn Hope, uh, once you got a blob of them, you'll want to run them into close range so you can throw their grenades as quickly as you can. And as I've experienced and I've seen people use against me, that's not a good idea. They're just going to die. Don't run them through the middle of the fo- board out of terrain. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at seven points each. You gotta be careful. It is very painful to see those expensive models die. So what are the various tactics that English Buccaneers can use to win games? Well, like like usual, we gotta split it up between land games and sea games. They are competent at both. Yes, very. I'll go ahead and take on the C since that is, you know, my bread and butter. So when we deal, we're looking at C games, they got a couple of different tactics. Where they're most at home at is definitely on the cannons. Before No Peace Be on the Line, they were the best at cannons, thanks to the Sea Dogs. They had expert artillery crew. However, after that, the Z Leiden kind of kicked them out of that top spot because they have, like we talked before, they have expert sailors, expert artillery crew, and they just have a better charging rule with hard chargers. However, These guys are really good. (laughs) You know, even if you don't plan on, if you plan on just doing a cannon list and just pelting your enemies from afar, they work great. You got an expert artillery crew. Yeah, it's good. They still have expert artillery crew. So, uh, expert artillery crew makes it so that you can have your sea dogs and cannons on more than one deck of the ship and have everybody still have expert artillery crew. You don't need that master gunner as much. Yeah, well, you still want the Master Gunner, like we've talked about before. If you're running a cannon list, always include a Master Gunner, because he's just good. But you aren't relying on him for that upgraded ability expert. Yeah. A lot of the problem that you have when you're running a gunship that only has one deck of guns is that your opponent will focus on that deck of guns to take out those gun crew, because they don't want the guns to fire anymore. But with Sea Dogs and Salidin and other cards, other ones that are um, expert have expert artillery crew, you can have the other decks still fire, even though your main deck of guns or your where your master gunner is usually uh, is disabled. So you can spread out your guns so you have don't have one target to shoot at. Yeah. Yeah. So your yeah. So your opponent doesn't cripple your ship by going after like the main deck of the of the sloop for for example i've actually made a list on a six rate frigate with nothing but sea dogs and then one unit of i believe it was freebooters all (laughs) all the cannons were light cannons for 200 points and i managed to fully gun that ship minus the chasers and the the stern guns Minus those two, because I don't ever use those. If I have to use those, I'm in a bad spot. But I managed to completely gun it out, and I fought a brig that was much better crewed and much better guys on them, and we blew that thing out of the water. I was testing it to see if this would work, and it was the same thing. He couldn't pick a deck to focus on, because if he fought at, shot at one deck, i just move up and go, all right, now these two decks are going to fire. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what uh, you want to stra- focus on. With a 
English Buccaneer canon list is the uh, the six rate frigate, the light frigate, even like a uh, brigantine is good for that. With uh, the sloop of war being the primary one, because if you're being shot up, you know you want that def- you want that higher defense that it offers over the brigantine. But those multiple deck of guns are are worthwhile. And if you love going slow, the flute is actually pretty good at uh, spreading out your cannons too. It can do two, two, and two, which really uh, evenly spreads things out. That's better. Like we've experienced, um, that's better for the English Buccaneer for the than the light frigate with one, three, and two. Having two, two, two is a better arrangement because they only take out two of their guns if they focus fire. Right. It's not quite as deadly uh, unless you ha- you're using broadside because you don't have as many cannons firing at once. But you last longer, potentially frustrate your enemy more. My recommended setup, if you're going to do a cannon list, is obviously use the Sea Dogs to to crew all your crew all your guns. If you don't plan on boarding, you can take away the pistols to you know save some points. Well, I don't recommend that because there's always a chance you could get boarded. But you know each their own. And so if I you have a unit more. of capers on your sheets and shrouds, you can constantly adjust your speed using their expert sailors. That, yeah. to me, is the ultimate cannon list, because they're not going to be shooting at the capers, but the capers on a deck that you know you don't care about, and just have them adjust your sails and do whatever advanced maneuvers you need, because they have expert sailors, and if they get close, you, they also have muskets. Yeah, that's good. You know, normally I'd like to do the freebooters, but they only have, they only have sailors. And I'm kind of spoiled. I play the Dutch all the time, typically. So I like that expert sailors. That minus one can save you from having not nice things happen to your ship. And for commanders, for that tactic, you have quite a few very uh, interesting ones. The seasoned one has broadside, which at 25 points, there's better options. Robert Searle has broadside. Um, I think you pointed out... Expert broadside, that's pretty tasty. For a cannon list, you already pointed out the best two are Houston and Kid. I was saving them for last. Yeah, they're oh! strict. <laughs> <laughs> strict is really good for cannons. The updated Strict gives you, a, you can give your men fatigue to give them a minus one on any uh, s- skill. So you can give them a minus one for the to hit roll and a minus one for the damage roll which is pretty much the only way to give cannons a bonus in the game. And I can tell from being, tell you from being on the receiving end of a broadside from a galleon with William Kidd in it, that it is very painful. A lot of fun though. Mm -hmm. But the other ones that you're talking about that would do a, uh, well with a broadside list or a cannon list other than Houston, uh, Diego, the mulatto, is still really good in this faction, just like most. Um, he actually shines a lot more in this, the English Buccaneers, because not a lot of the other commanders have three command points and very inspiring. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's uh, John Morris, the other 30.1 with three command points, uh, only has inspiring. So uh, Diego is actually really good in this faction. And three command points means that you can fire all four decks of a four deck ship, like a galleon or sixth rate, if you have them attached to one of those cannon crews. That would be amazing <laughs> if you can line all the four decks up on one target. Well, kind of a, a weird thing of the rules that I love. I love rule crannies. I'm not even gonna call, call them breaking ones, but with a commander with broadside. It says that all artillery fired during this commander's activation are fired simultaneously, hence it counts as the same range attack. Well, you can move your ship between actions of a turn of an activation. So you can you can use using the rules as written, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, you can say, okay, I'm gonna fire these two decks, and then move a little bit, and then fire these two decks. And still have it all count as the same broadside. You can move between actions of one unit. Oh, you can move between you know, in a in a unit's activation. You can move between you can move between their actions. So you can like you can have a unit activate, have them do something, move, and then have them do something else. So you could 
do you can use a command unit fire your front two decks that are lined up with command points and then move the ship and then fire your back two decks and it's still all considered one it would be one roll. broadside with how broadside <laughs> is written that's i'm okay with that i mean i don't know if that's legal or not but it's it's thematic i think as you it, as your ship is moving you just like right down the line right? <laughs> that's awesome damn that'd be so cool <laughs> that would be, it would be really uh thematic especially with diego leading the charge for that four deck broadside <laughs> ah i want to play i want to do that <laughs> So that that kind of uh, the those two commanders, um, you don't ever want to put really Henry Morgan in charge of a ship because he hurts it too much. Yeah, um, fortune at sea. I mean, he's still good with lucky and very inspired and for fortune. As long as you don't have any uh, shoals on the board and aren't going to do any fancy pants sailing, you're fine. So, but, so yeah. don't be Joseph. Right, <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. You know, shoal magnet Joe over there. Oh, I have another tale about that. Guy and I were playing a couple of weeks ago, and I had, uh, I forget what ship, I, think I was using Light Frigate, but I rolled, going over a shoal, I rolled two tens. Yeah. <laughs> With the next one, Yeah, yeah I, I rolled two tens. <laughs> I had to use a fortune to. <laughs> oh. But I was successful on the second one, so. Yeah, I was really hoping you wouldn't be. Like, that was my only way to win at that time, was for you to run into that shoal. <laughs> I almost did. So, uh, Bernard uh, Spied uh, Speedrick, um, he's also a good one for for a cannon list. He has expert broadside. You've talked about expert broadside before, Dan. Especially yeah. with light cannons, like it's a it's a good combination if you're going to load up on light cannons to have expert broadside because that makes it so your lucky hit your multiple firings of lucky hits or multiple firings with light cannons are more likely to come up as a lucky hit because you're firing more guns and being able to roll ones re-roll ones with a lucky hit is actually pretty useful. Yeah, yeah, that's that's classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he also has very inspiring too. So twenty five points, he is far better than the seasoned. Never take mm -hmm. the seasoned. Pretty much. Like, never. <laughs> <laughs> also, the seasoned only has brace of pistols, and pretty much all the historicals have uh, option to take a buccaneer gun or brace yeah. of pistols, which makes them uh, pretty valuable. That's nice. Some of them have a a firelock musket. Instead, uh, who is it? I think uh, Thomas Houston. Uh, he has a he has a firelock musket instead of a buccaneer gun. He's a militia commander, really. What's he doing, uh, slumming with pirates? I think I think he can be used as militia, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I've, I've been doing some research on some commanders for, and a lot of notable people. They just did a lot of fighting at sea and on land, so. At, some of this design choice makes sense. But yeah, he has broadside Commodore. <laughs> Doesn't work very good on that. <laughs> anyway, a lot of good commanders for a cannon list. How about the boarding list? How does how do the English work for that? For a boarding list, that's kind of where they kind of sort of fall apart. So it is possible, just not recommended. You might look at them and go, oh, look, we have Forlorn Hope sea dogs they seem to be you know pretty good world and hope are amazing sea dogs not so much their issue is that while they have a good stat line for the most part you resolve five a six six fight and a seven seven shoot the problem is that they have brawlers which is not as reliable as like hard chargers are and i believe both the marins and the z light both have that yeah so these guys are definitely more suited to firing cannons than being in combat while brace of pistols might help that, it's not gonna. It's not as not as reliable. I mean, they aren't bad at boarding, but no, they aren't. Yeah, as they're good not terrible, but they're the definitely Dutch. they're you'll you're you're even gonna be outdone by you know the the marineros, which is much nah. better bag on them. At least they have you know ruthless and a smart, competent Spanish commander will stack that fatigue up before charging. 
not only that, but the, your uh, Spanish commander will that wants to board are going to load up on um, marineros pequeros in a forward boarding position to survive any onslaughts and uh, swing through those pikes. Or not pikes, but uh, lances. <laughs> yeah. So, so the English in melee, they have a strong save. So they're sturdy in a fight, but they aren't very aggressive, really. So yeah, yeah they don't they don't hit as hard speed. is the issue. And the the problem that a lot of this uh, this faction has with boarding is that with veteran freebooters, which we haven't gone over veteran freebooters, will we're going to touch on them in in the next section, but. With veteran freebooters are eight points each. Forlorn Hope are seven points each. Freebooters, non-veteran, are six points each. Capers are five points each. These are not, and all of them, you lose the all of them. Their saves are basically a coin flip on whether they're going to survive a counterattack in a charge because their yeah. save is six. So you are disincentivized to you do a boarding action. Because let's say you pop that, you you pop your your um your grapples over. You have your unit of Barney badass freebooters run over with their with their their one pistol. They fire their one pistol to get that you know make that six fight into like a three fight. They kill a bunch of people on the four deck of whatever ship you boarded. Now they're going to be counterattacked. Now you have a coin flip. <laughs> For every one of the the cannon crew that got to you know pull themselves off the guns and do a counterattack, let's say they get four hits, that means you're losing twelve points of freebooters. Yeah, just on the counterattack. Three point models, and you have six. Yeah, yeah. They're and better if, at shooting, really. They're they're better at like if you're gonna board, play a different faction. I have seen English buccaneer lists that like refuse to board. And what they want to do instead is scoop right next to the opponent's ship and raise hell. Just never Stop throw those grapples. Head. <laughs> I mean, Just... obviously, you know, if you're create if you're creative with your strategy, like you do have access to the Entreploag, you have again forlorn hope that can lead that charge. But it's just that's that's it. The tip of your spear. If you're gonna make a boarding a boarding faction all of your units need to be fairly decent at boarding. You can't just have, you can't rely on a strong unit to kind of carve a path and hopefully have your guys mop up because you will get counterattacked and yeah. you want to be able to survive that. And it's a balance between I can kill a lot of units so the counterattack doesn't hurt or I can get over there and kill a few units and try to outlast that counterattack. I prefer to kill more units on the get-go. That's just yeah. me, though. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's what that's why Marines make good borders is they're not going to survive a counterattack, but they're they're three points each and they hit on a four without a, a pistol. Like yeah. they that's that's going to kill whatever unit they're in. A bunch of them are going to die, but then you would have more to back them up. That's why Flibuzes are a good boarding unit because you board. And they have a brace of pistols, so they use a, f a pistol on the charge to get like a two fight to kill the unit that's in there. And then when they get counterattacked, they have to be shot with small arms to hopefully get two or more fatigue, so they don't do a pistol shot as a uh, counterattack. Yeah, you know, and yeah, that these can take filibuster, so that can boost up your melee ability. But it's a support unit. Yeah. I should clarify when you say two fight. You're factoring and doing the math on the reroll. Yeah, I'm doing the the pistol reroll math because right. it um with a six fight you're hitting you're hitting fifty percent of the time with a six fight because that's a uh, um six to ten is fifty percent of the dice, and by rerolling it you're actually making it so you hit fifty percent of your misses. 75%. So you're actually yeah you're hitting on seventy five percent of your dice, which I'll round up to a. Or round down to a two, <clears throat> or I mean, I round up to a three. And if the fight is a five, so you're hitting sixty percent of the time, and you're hitting sixty percent of your your misses, that's that I round down to a two, or round to a two. If you want to do a boarding list, even if it is ill-advised compared to some, what are the commanders that are going to support you there? Oy, um, <laughs> Robert Searle seems to be the standout to me. 
He has brawlers, which is everyone's favorite rule. We always <laughs> rag on that. And it gives you an extra <laughs> shot on a D10. So it's like, it's not very many more hits. It's kind of like ball and shot. Uh, but aggressive commander is a good one. Yeah. He has everyone yeah. Can just command rage, hard charger. So that's pretty much everyone on a ship because he has a 12 inch range. Yeah. So once you get that, then you're hitting on 60% of your dice. So that brings him into the respectable range rather than the lame duck range. Yeah, the issue is the English thrive, the English faction as a whole, is that they're not specialists, they're generalists. So the issue is once you start branching out of that, we're kind of good at everything and trying to specialize, you almost lose a lot of that. Because if you're going to build a dedicated boarding list, you're generally not going to have a lot of units with muskets in, in general. You're going to try to you know, make up for your lack of hitting with more numbers. At least in my opinion, that is how you would do it. And you're really breaking that that tr- that thing. Whereas with the French, they're either, you got to commit. You're either going to make a list of Marins that you're just going to hop over and just chop heads, or you're going to stay back and load up with as many muskets as you can and twirl your mustache, tip your hat to them while you blow them away with your superior musketry. You know, with the English, you kind of don't have that option because you're okay at musketry and okay at charging, but you're not you're not better than the French. You're certainly not better than the Dutch at charging at all. So it's almost like you're fi- you're you're in your own way. Is what I'm trying to say. You're in your own way if you're going to try to specialize the English list, in my opinion, at least yeah. for seat. Well, all all you're you're 100 right. All English buccaneer lists are going to be a mix of cannons, boarding, and small arms. You get to like mix two of them together, and that's that's how you get how you have success with this faction. Though is that you're not all in on one thing. You're you need to be enough of a generalist that if something isn't working, like let's say you brought a bunch of cool cannons, like medium guns on on three decks or light cannons on four decks of a of a six rate. But your opponent is in something that has heavily built. And you don't have a commander with broadside. So with luckily with the English Buccaneer list, you can lean on another one of your specialties uh, when you're up against a wall like that. And that makes yeah. you good for something like a tournament where you don't know who you're going to be up against. Or it makes it good for newer players that don't want to be don't have want to have a big weakness they can do everything competently and then they mm-hmm. can kind of pivot to the tactic that is appropriate for that particular game but it limits their ceiling of power in any particular sphere of the game so your good boarding ships before we move on you're going to want your tartana privateer sloop corvette sloop of war light frigate Basically, all those you know, typical piratey quote unquote vessels, where you're really fast and you get to control the engagement. For a cannon list, we already kind of talked about the flute. You know, if you like going slow, it holds just as many cannons as a light frigate, I believe. Going to be a little yep. slower, but you get to spread those guns out. And obviously, the light frigate, the six ray, if you want to be a troll like me and play a two hundred point game and load it up, <laughs> and then you know the sloop of war. Those are the ships you kind of want to stick with. Again, pick your poison. Don't try to specialize. If you're going to board, know that you might want to try to soften them up with some musketry a little bit. Just it, it takes time and experience. That's that's what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. It takes time and experience to kind of gauge. And now I say we move on to land, where the, those of us who aren't incompetent, that's me, I'm incompetent on land, can talk about this. Oh, but but really quick, let's talk about my favorite version of the English Buccaneers at sea, the uh, small arms craft, or small arms. This hurts. I've been up against it. You can really load up on good muskets and swivel guns and dump lead on your opponent if you get into that medium range. Yeah, and uh, let's start by talking about the veteran freebooter. The veteran freebooter is a core unit when this faction and also the Brethren of the Coast. It is a model that uses the Macelles d'Escarvis model. Uh, so they are uh, standing there. They have a buccaneer gun, plug bayonets, and a sword, along with a sidearm musket or sidearm pistol. Um, and they have a six fight, six fight save, a six shoot score, and a six shoot save, along with a five resolve. Good stats. Yeah, the six 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 five 
uh, the exact same stats as the African Warriors. <laughs> yep. They come as veteran for eight points, and they have the same abilities as freebooters, which are sailors, ball and shot, fast re- fast reload, and marksmen. So these guys are eight points each. They're a core. They're a core model. So you can have a command unit of these, and the veteran freebooters are pound for pound the the one of the best uh, musket units in the game, especially on a, on a ship. Because they have that sailors to make it work, they have fast reload, and they're veterans. So you're going to be getting three actions on a spade. Counting the fast reload, yeah. Yeah, counting the fast reload, not even counting your commander's ability. So, right. So why this is important for a, a English uh, strategy is the the english are one of the fa- one of the factions that can with a sea sh- uh, uh, a ship list not even care about cannons they can load up on swivel guns and muskets and using veteran freebooters or freebooters even and have a just a just a musket and swivel gun list Usually, like I, I had a list. I just called it. This is the best C list I can come up with because it, every turn it shot, shot thirty four dice at your opponent, like <laughs> twenty of the or what it, it was, um, uh, eighteen of those were at a six shoot, and the other, <laughs> the other fourteen were, uh, um, the other like fourteen of it was at a, as a at a five shoot because you're using marksmen with these with the veteran rebooters. Wow. So that's that's kind of what the English Buccaneers can do. They can uh you can load up on muskets and swivels and just just uh, attack your opponent mercilessly. You don't have to worry about you can sail your ship however you want to sail it, avoiding uh raking shots obviously. Sounds annoying to fight. <laughs> it is, but it's it's from from playing the ones the the marksman guys. Like that's the the buccaneer game is to stay at range as long as you can because if your opponent is hitting on tens and you're hitting on eights, that's they're hitting ten percent of the time and you're hitting thirty percent of the time. You're gonna win, yeah. <laughs> you also can throw buccaneers as support units into that list and yeah, leverage their five. Um, yeah, and the veteran freebooters have a six uh, range save, so even uh, helps protect those eight point models when they're on a ship. They're saving sixty percent of the time. So even if that ten does happen with this horrible Spanish muskets at long range, you have a, a pretty high likelihood of saving those guys. So it makes the list quite good. Yeah, it does. And that six and. Packing that you want to if with the uh, veteran bucane or not veteran bucane but the veteran fever deck you want to put as many sea dogs in there as possible because they're mm-hmm. going to soak up the shots that are heading towards your your veteran freebooters. So even though they have a six save, you don't want you want to lose as few of them as possible. They're just I, I know I played that list against you a bunch of times, Joseph, and it's it's mm-hmm. killer. Yeah, it is. That sounds rough. I don't know why he still plays with you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have another follow-up on those veteran freebooters? No, no, they are they're really good. You can do the same strategy with freebooters, but they're um they're because they have the same abilities as, as veteran freebooters, so you can use marksmen. But that that six shoot save is just kind of like um it saves it it preserves your points that you invest in them a lot. Yeah, you can upgrade the freebooters to a veteran for seven points, but then you have to do the math. Do you want to pay one more point each to save more of them with a six shoot? And there could be... You'll have to decide. But with all those expensive guys, it helps to have the great three-point sea dogs and your swivel guns. You can bring a bunch of them to kind of boost up your numbers, and they can shoot Swivel guns really efficiently on hearts. They can uh, shoot and fully reload every turn on a heart or a club. And you can also use the unknown African from the uh, Buccaneers Companion 
a character three points that gives Indomitable, which means you can remove a fatigue at the beginning of the activation every time, which means you can push them every single turn as <laughs> to yeah. get rid of the fatigue, which means you can shoot swivels twice in one turn if you want. Con- constantly, it's... Um... The good thing that that English Buccaneer does is all of their units will have a spade activated ability, or some of them, like the Sea Dogs, have a hard activated ability. So you can just you can dump those swivel dice and musket dice out at range. Yeah, if you have veterans and Sea Dogs, your spades are valuable because they're two plus fast reload. Your hearts are valuable because they're two plus expert. Artillery crew, your diamonds are valuable because they're three actions for a veteran freebooters, and your clubs are valuable because they're three actions. So you can make good use out of every single card in your hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's every turn, every model on your ship gets to shoot, which is a lot of fun. All right, now we can go to the land stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that's that's one of my favorite English Buccaneer lists is to to run run with that <laughs> just because it's so it's a lot of fun and the uh, you know I don't know if it was true but uh, fact what is it fact fiend I think it was um, or no business place said that uh, the the English Buccaneers used to have a saying that they would bring five muskets for every cannon they expected to fight because they're worth the same thing. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, well, it, when they're fighting, it was called it was like five, five, uh, five guns to every cannon. So they, if they were expecting to fight a ship that had two cannons, they would bring ten muskets because that's the equal, the equal destructive capability to the two cannons. No, okay. <laughs> I get it. Okay, I had to process. Yeah. Dang. So, what are some land strategies that we would want to do with the English Buccaneers? Well, they can sit back and shoot with marksmen, like we talked about in that land, that uh, sea list, the small yeah. arms. Or, and then they can have a aggressive melee force, especially those um, forlorn hope, run in and get the job done with the brace of pistols and four resolve and explosives. I find they're pretty good at assaulting fortifications, like the wooden fort or even the stone tower fort, if you're that foolish. If you make a veteran, put a local guide on them, they can have quick and plus a couple actions. They can do yeah. it. They're the best at running up, throwing grenades, and shooting their muskets, shooting their pistols. They can uh, move fast, throw a lot of damage down. I really like with a local guide on Forlorn Hope, how they get to move their vanguard uh, using mm-hmm. scouts. So you can put them right next to rough terrain and just in the as before the game even start, cut right into it to where you want to go. Yeah, the Vanguard is a fun rule like that, but it only yeah. works really on land. Yeah, well, it works on a ship, but like most of the time, you just do <laughs> like I when I've used it on a ship with Forlorn Hope, I'll do something cute like how like I'll say I'm starting them up in like uh, on the quarter deck, and then I'll just move them onto the main deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so the English, they aren't particularly adept at uh, moving through cover or using cover, but they're they got solid stats. They're pretty expensive, like I mentioned earlier. So uh, we played the Buccaneers Companion recently, uh, Guy and myself, and there was a lot of land games. I played the English, yeah. and I was pretty much always outnumbered, and I had to be real careful to preserve my points or I would get overwhelmed, which happened. Several times. <laughs> well, you did a good job at it, though. The key strategy I think that I noticed uh, is that you stuck your units together a lot of the time. Especially if you don't have a lot of units to begin with. If you are spread them too far apart, then it's easy to for your opponent to concentrate on one side and the other side can't do anything. If they're all next to each other, then you get to choose where you want to spend your command points. And like in that La Serena fight, your Sea dogs were used a defensive attack when I was trying to co- to kill your command unit. They saved the day. Yeah, they did. 
twice because remember they had those three tens from their earlier volley. <laughs> those are marksmen for sure. Yeah. They also can take some land ish units like the warrior musketeers. They aren't a awesome unit. They aren't nearly as quick as at firing and a slow reload, but they can utilize cover a lot better. You can also bring engages, which again, they're inexperienced, but they're cheap and they save well in cover. Buccaneers, the same. English militia, you could spam out a bunch of mob land as well. But those are all support units, so can't really do too. And sea dogs with muskets, honestly, are as good or better than militia because they have a. Actually, not so much because English militia have five resolve. But. Well, sea dogs with muskets, I noticed uh, with you, especially when you wanted to. You're, be your own. The only reason you're going to buy a cheap unit like English Militia or Sea Dogs is because you want to push up your strike points. And having Sea Dogs with muskets just covering a flank, even though they're not going to hit a lot of the time, is still really useful. Yep. Always have charge them. Always keep keep them um, with only one. If you're worried about a charge, always keep them with um, only one reload on them which means you're going to do some half-firing a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But still, still really useful to have. Yep, definitely worth taking. So you don't have half as many models as your opponent. Yeah. And on land, the Bucane, Flibuze, these are, are both good land units, tried and true, if you want to load up on them. And I would say the commanders are very inspiring, and Henry Morgan are all going to be good options for commanders. John Morris is pretty cool with his vast experience. But none of the commanders really have land-specific abilities. Something we haven't touched on yet, but all of the Buccaneers Companion commanders are commanders for this faction. So, everything we said in our Brethren of the Coast article or, <laughs> or video about the uh, Buccaneer's Companion is true in this faction, which means that the the only really good one is well, there's two good ones. Um, it's um, Bartholomew Sharp and the one dude that's uh, that's 15 points for for or was it 10 points for two command points? Yeah, impulsive. But yeah, Richard Sawkins is cheapo guy if you want. Bartholomew yeah. Sharp is cool because he has very inspired and ruthless, and you can take all these as. Uh, characters which makes the english buccaneers kind of unique you have a lot of options for unique characters that are cheaper than say the officer or something they have a drawback or two but yeah if you haven't looked at it yet the buccaneers companion there's a download that has a list of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different characters you can use for english buccaneers and some of them fit into other, like French and Brother of the Coast, but all available to the English Buccaneers. Some of them are not useful. They're just bad commanders, so they're reflected in that game, but some of them are fun. Yeah, and there is one um, commander that is from the Buccaneers Companion. Or not commander, but one character that only English factions can take that is the guy that, that wrote the whole saga. William Dampier? William Dampier? Yeah. Yeah. He's only yeah. in English factions as a as a character. So you can you can take him. Uh he's really only going to be on a ship because he will give you a change sail setting or advanced maneuver. But he also has careful planning because he wrote all those books. So he is very careful in his planning. But he's he's actually not bad for three points for a ship list. Yeah, it's fun to have these cheap, unique named characters. It's always fun to have a guy with history to add to your force. Yeah. And that unknown African you mentioned is standout as well. Yep, still with also William the Mosquito Striker, because none of the core units in this faction have scouts. Of the of the support units, only warrior musketeers have scouts. So <laughs> you having having that Local guide. If you don't want to do a local guide, having your mosquito striker with your forlorn hope would be really useful. Also, would give them uh, dead eye, which 
you're not going to use a lot of the time, but uh, dead eye is still really, it, you know, it's still something to do. Might help you root out those pesky buccaneers from their cover. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like what we hit on before. Uh, English are an all around unit or all around faction. You, when you make a land list, you, you're going to be good at musketry. You're going to be good at like a little, a little good at surviving a charge. You don't really want to initiate a charge unless you're like certain you're going to win. I've, I run into a lot of problems when playing the English Buccaneer where I think I'll be in a good position to charge and to start some melee fights. And then I just lose the game because I only got a couple kills and now my freebooters don't have <laughs> pistols anymore <laughs> and they get countercharged. Yeah, that's, that's rough. Then you wish you were playing French. Yes. <laughs> Again, veteran freebooters are kind of immune to that because they get that. Usually, if you're going to charge with veteran, veteran freebooters, you have your bayonets. So you can save your uh, your pistol sidearm for a counterattack. Are we ready to move on to the buy? Yeah. Now, I, I my problem with the English the starter. Here, yeah, the starter, is that it gives you eight English militia that are, are decent, that I love the sculpts for the English militia, uh, but they are not a, in my opinion, a good support model for this unit, unless you want to fill it out. But like you said, like you touched at, sea dogs with muskets are better than English militia with muskets. I think. Yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly. I don't use, especially if you're running a militia list where they're core units. That's one thing. A support mm -hmm. unit, meh. You have better options. You can use the English Militia as engages if you want. I think the first uh, supplement they published with the engages them used some of those models. So yeah, that's they did. one way to yeah. use them a little more efficiently. And really, they're armed with a mix of, I think two of them have firelock and two have matchlock. That's right. Recall. So you could, you could run them as capers even if you wanted. Like... I, really fancy looking capers. I mean, you could. I, I would have a problem with it. Capers are Dutch. They are. They're supposed to be fancy, oh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just getting ready to swap jackets. That's all. <laughs> they wore the orange sash under their jackets. That's how they get away with it. <laughs> the other buying uh, consideration is if you're going to go for a cannon heavy list, you'll want to buy a bunch of sailors and then uh, sea dogs and then that pr pirates and privateers set might be. Uh, pretty good buy, but it doesn't really include anybody that's ideal for a freebooter model. No, it doesn't. Yeah, which, uh, like, I think the the blood and pigment stamp of approval. You want to play sea games, buy the pirates, pirates and privateers box first, because it will give you a bunch of sailors to man your guns on any ship you buy. Like, can we say that? Guys is, uh, no, I don't like it. But I, <laughs> it is efficient, but I don't like it because I like specific models for specific factions that make me happy, and I will never change. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be blood and pigment heresy. I've used the Sailor Musketeer <laughs> models as freebooters in a pinch. <laughs> I know, just calm. It's okay. Just think of the shoals, Joseph. Think of the shoals. <laughs> but yeah, I when I started playing. Like I said, you know, I got the English box first, and then I realized that that was not very good. And by then, I was like, maybe I should transition over to Dutch. So then I got the Pirates and Privateers box, and again, like we said, so many sailor units that you can crew. Pretty much, you're gonna be a sailor's box, and then one of the faction boxes. Pretty much, what you need to go for a C list, depending on what your faction is. Yep. I think I think if you're gonna play English, you're gonna you if you're gonna start in Blood and Plunder, you're gonna buy a starter set. Like you yeah. should, you should be a starter set. It gets you the English English set gets you your commander, you know. But after that, just buy blisters if you want to do English Buccaneer. They also yeah. have an online only commander that's got two pistols that looks really badass. I no. bought him, but I painted up to be Dutch because that's how I roll. But he looks really badass, and I love him. <laughs> yeah, the a starter box saves you a bit of money, but if you know kind of how you want to play, 
buying just blisters isn't a bad choice. You're probably going to want a bunch of sea dogs. You might want eight forlorn hope. So you're going to have to get a blister of those anyway. Yeah. You're going to want some freebooters. If you want any veteran freebooters, they're in the French box. So they aren't going to come in either of those boxes we mentioned. Capers or core, and they're going to be in the Dutch box. Buccaneers are in the French box. Uh, Warrior Musketeers are in the native box. Interplug. I mean, there's you can play models from every faction, every nationality except for the Spanish here. Yeah. Reasonably. So uh, English is a good place to start. Pirates and Privateers next, and then you could just snipe packs if you want. Just buying packs is is good. I was a hair's breadth away from recommended buying. If you want to start as English Buccaneers, buy the French nationality starter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got your four on hope, your veteran free booters, and your Buccaneers. I mean, you're good. To, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you're fle- yeah, fle- and you're, the, uh, the fle- <laughs> fle- Bizet's, veteran free bidders, Bukine, <laughs> and you can pretend the Marines are sea dogs. <laughs> there, that's it. <laughs> the sea dogs do have um you're gonna want you're gonna want sixteen to twenty of these guys as a English Buccaneer player, just because you're gonna you're gonna put them on a ship. And the sculpts of the sea dogs are actually really good. I love the uh the dude that's throwing the axe uh or slashing with the axe. I always and think he's throwing it. What do you guys think? I think he's about to sprain his ankle, that's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate it. It feels I satisfying to... when that model kills someone. <laughs> <laughs> it's really satisfying. <laughs> Throwing weapons, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's hard. You're gonna usually buy a starter to start yeah, because it just fine. feels natural. And if you buy the English nationality starter box, it comes with the little card for the English Buccaneers. So right. nice and easy to play off of. Yeah, like even three years into the game, those little cards are still useful to me. Yeah, uh, we we almost came to a consensus. <laughs> <laughs> we always came, almost came to a quorum about buying the Pirates and Privateers box, but lo, Joseph laid us out and denied I, it. I will never <laughs> agree. <laughs> I, I do what I want. He can't tell me what to do. He's not even my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we wrap this up? How would we rate this faction for power and fun? I'll start us off. If we're going by tens, I'm going to rate them a solid... We'll go with five boarding cutlasses. Because while they're not they're not a terrible faction, they're just really well-rounded, and that within is like almost their downfall, is that they're going to be... You know, if any of your dedicated melee units are going to be outdone by everybody else's dedicated melee units, your sharpshooters are going to be outdone by everybody else's sharpshooters. So they're at like kind of like the brig, the brigantine. It is the this is the mediumist faction, I would say, as far as the seafaring factions of buccaneers go. They were the mediumist. So a good five out of ten. Not terrible, but also not amazing. Well, I'll take next. Looking at this faction, I've had a lot of fun with this faction, and I have to give it eight out of ten brace of pistols on four lone hopes. Because this fa- this faction is a lot of fun. A lot of people are going to play this because English Buccaneers are the most well-known of the Buccaneers. Just because we have the most information out of them. A lot of the world speaks English, and there were a lot of books published about these guys. Morgan so, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we barely touched on them because Morgan and Kid are most of the time, like... They're they're both better in their own faction than this faction, but actually I like Morgan better in this faction I think than his. No, oh, never mind. His own faction has an awesome rule. So. Yeah, the and and even Kid, his faction gives the ship that he's piloting or the flagship heavily built. So right, you know, you can have a heavily built bark if you wanted. But <laughs> I think can you do? Oh gosh, can I? I can you do a heavily built canoe? Canoe. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Can you? I just a thirty-two uh, point commander in a canoe. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cut in and give my rating. This has gone far enough here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to give them eight as well. I think eight Granados to the face. That seems to be how it goes when I play against the, these guys. Um, I don't think they're the most powerful, but they are very well-rounded. And one of the main considerations for me is the fun of all the different commanders and all the different characters. They have one, two, they have like 10 or 11, 12 unique commanders, plus a wide variety of interesting characters you can add from the Buccaneers Companion. Uh, I think they're high-powered commanders, Morgan, Kid, Morris, plus the Dutch guys like uh, Diago the Mulatto, all really strong. Uh, the Four Lone Hope are probably my favorite unit in the game. And they're flexible. Even if they aren't doing great, they can stick in the game and they have good resolve. So I think the French Buccaneers are probably better overall, especially in the hands of a really experienced player. But I think the English Buccaneers are a great option for anyone just getting into the game. They're pretty forgiving to play, as long as uh, whoever's playing you isn't too expert and cruel with their French or something. <laughs> um, and they can be played at land and sea, so I think they're uh, reasonably strong and quite fun and have a lot of options for force building, so I'll give them eight. Very true. Like, we, we touched it in the beginning, but the, the weird thing about the English Buccaneers is that the everything the English Buc like there's a couple things the English Buccaneer have that the French Buccaneers have, but they're a little bit better at. Like like uh the French Buccaneers getting free grape shot and then the English Buccaneers having the same abilities but not the grape shot. The French Buccaneers, all their generic commanders getting you know, a Buccaneer gun. But the English co Buccaneer commanders having same options, but no Buccaneer gun. <laughs> yeah. French always outclass me. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that comment, I, I think that wraps up the English Buccaneers. That was fun, but that was a long one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. For a full review of this, this faction... And the other Buccaneer factions, as well as a lot of other factions and nationalities, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out a wide variety of articles there. You can look at ship articles, uh, articles on factions, nations, terrain building, painting guides, battle reports, and tactics, all sorts of stuff. This has been another Blood and Pigment Faction Review. Keep your dice ready in the wind at your back, yarhar.